G'day guys and gal, the Night Lords were the bad guys before there was bad guys. Years before the Horus Heresy, Conrad Curse disemboweled Rogel Dawn, killed a bunch of Imperial Fists, and then escaped into deep space with his Legion before then blowing up his own home world. Dude had some serious issues, with his Legion literally being described as a bunch of murderers and rapists who had been given godlike power and relish in the sadistic suffering of others. So it's a bit of a shock that out of all the traitor legions, the Night Lords rejected Chaos the most, even more so than the Alpha Legion and the Iron Warriors. Despite being super evil, they had this twisted sense of honor and desire to maintain their free will. Hence, the Night Lords remain by far the most uncorrupted traitor legion in the galaxy. But why is that? Why are the enlightened Thousand Sons more corrupted than the rapey Night Lords? I mean, hell, why are the sort of loyal Alpha Legion more corrupted? It's a bit of a head scratcher. Before we get started, I need to apologize to all you sorry boys and girls who have gotten addicted to Tacticus. We are all in this together. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then prepare yourself as I introduce you to not only the greatest 40k mobile game, but legitimately the only mobile game I currently play. Like I'm literally in the third highest guild and have basically logged on every day for over a year now. What makes Tacticus so great isn't just the fact that the characters are modeled, posed, and painted exactly like tabletop, nor the fact that there are currently 14 factions. It's not even the seven unique game modes such as the guild raid boss fights or onslaught. No, for me, it's that the game takes actual strategy and thought. It's not one of those idle play itself games. If you do not position your characters well enough, or if you don't have the right team comp, you're gonna have a bad time. For example, when I fight Mortarian, I use Abraxas of the Thousand Suns and the Tyranid Neurothroat for insane results. This is because the Nero gets massively increased damage every time a target takes psychic damage, with Abraxas able to inflict multiple hits of psychic damage with his ability. So to join in on the addictive life shattering fun then use my link below as well as code MAJORSCORE23 for a massive bonus gift, valid for both new and current players. Cheers to Tacticus for sponsoring this video. Today we will go over why the Night Lords hate Chaos, giving examples of them rejecting Chaos as well as explaining their motives for attempting to remain pure. And let's get into it. Each Traitor Legion had a different reason for betraying the Imperium at the start of the Horus Heresy, and most of those reasons had nothing to do with Chaos. For Conrad Curse, it was because he saw a vision of the Emperor sending an assassin to kill him, hence thought he was justified since technically the Emperor betrayed him first. Yes, I know that logic is dog shit, but that's just how Conrad sees it. Conrad also believed that all of his visions would 100% come to pass, and that there was nothing he could do to change it. Hence, after seeing a vision of his Night Lords joining the traitors, he was like, Kawabunga it is! Also, Conrad was already a bit of a dickhead so he didn't really have much of a moral issue with it. As for his legion, by this point it was already full of criminals and degenerates who didn't feel much loyalty to the distant emperor, hence the Night Lord Legion had very few loyalist elements that either escaped or were purged. However this doesn't really explain why, as a majority, they kept chaos at arm's length. Well imagine you're protesting against the shitty tyrannical regime, then the guy next to you says, yeah man, I hate this tyrannical regime, they made it illegal to fuck kids. Sure you were part of the same protest with the same goal of overthrowing the government, but that doesn't mean you also want to fuck kids. The Night Lords aren't pro-chaos, they are literally just anti-Imperium, and with Conrad outright refusing any form of chaos possession or ascension, many of his sons also didn't want to either with the ones that did needing to go out of their way to do so. I'll now give some good examples of the Night Lords rejecting chaos. During the Horus Heresy, when Argul Tal, a very well-liked, very corrupted traitor marine, tried to go up to Sevatar, the first captain of the Night Lords, to talk to him, Sevatar spat at his feet and told him to go suck some demonic dick. Sevatar didn't want to bar of him and saw him as weak for allowing his body to become a meat suit in order to gain some power. In more recent lore, the Night Lord 10th Company had a very interesting situation with chaos, and their attempts to resist it. Just through being alive and interacting with other Chaos Warbands, corruption had slowly been trying to sink its way into the Night Lord Warband. Uzas was actively trying to and kind of succeeding in resisting Kornak corruption. Sirion was being corrupted by Slanesh, but beyond just making him addicted to tasting fear, he was a pretty chill bloke and didn't exhibit any of the sex, drugs and rock and roll symptoms of a normal Slaneshi slut. The captain of the ship was possessed by a demon, which you could argue kind of defeats my point, but he was horrified and was always trying to break free of the demon demon's possession and purge it from his body. He actually ended up succeeding and was able to temporarily retake control of his body, sacrificing himself and the demon in a glorious moment of self-sacrifice, giving the demon control back in the moments before their death so that the demon, not he, would feel the pain and fear of annihilation. So overall, the captain was a pretty cool bloke. He was just quite literally battling his demons. Other members of 10th Company who had some serious issues were the raptors, who appeared to be affected by Nurgle-like corruption as their skin was decaying and their 
joints were constantly cracking and popping, not to mention they were constantly bleeding from the eyes. However, once again, they didn't spread plagues to others or cause outward corruption, nor did they appear particularly insane or worship Nurgle. I mean, yeah, they were fucking crazy, but not like in a chaosy way. Talos was the de facto leader of 10th Company and actively tried to keep Chaos away from his brothers, punching Uzas in the face when he got too loud about Cornite shit, with Sirion actively trying to hide and suppress his corruption as to not upset Talos. As for their ship, the Covenant of Blood, yeah, it had its issues, chief amongst them being that everyone on board became infertile, with there only ever being like one birth in centuries, but compared to other Chaos ships, it was the Garden of Eden. When the Night Lords captured a Red Corsair ship that used to belong to them, they were horrified with how corrupted it was, with parts of the ship being organic and requiring purging. The ship's navigator was a batshit insane chick that swam around in a pool of blood like a fucked up Chaos Dolphin. Contrast this with the Night Lords, whose navigators were completely sane and uncorrupted, and the difference is pretty dramatic. The thing is, the Red Corsairs aren't even really known as a super corrupted Chaos Warband. They only became traitors relatively recently and live in the Maelstrom, which is way less Chaosy than the Eye of Terror. So imagine how bad some of the other Warbands would be. All of this is a big reason as to why the Night Lords are so well liked. It's because they have stuck true to their purpose and reasoning for 10,000 years. Unlike Mortarion, who was anti psycho then became a psychic smelly Mothman, or Magnus, who wanted to do the right thing, but then did the wrong thing, so he just kind of rolled with it, Conrad Curse died on his own terms. What is death compared to vindication? Sure, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. As I've said, the Night Lords do have a lot of corruption as well, actively fighting alongside demons and heavily corrupted allies. Not to mention, there are plenty of Night Lord demon princes, and they happily use chaos weapons if they think it will grant them power. I mean, fuck, two of the larger Night Lord warbands are literally led by demon princes, but the most important Night Lords, whom all others look up to, are anti chaos. Sevatar was embarrassed for those that embraced chaos, Conrad rejected it outright, Talos kept it from claiming his company, would there even once been a Night Lord who was so disgusted by it that he defected from the traitors and started helping the Inquisition? The successor to Talos and the potential new leader of the Night Lord Legion is Decimus, a powerful prophet who inherited Talos's gene seed and holds onto a lot of the same beliefs. Decimus gathered most of the Legion to him and in that meeting, there wasn't a whole lot of chaos corruption. Sure, the super chaosy Night Lord warbands may have just ignored the meeting, but the point still stands. At the end of the day, the Night Lord Legion was told to scatter and rally behind their various leaders to pursue the long war in their own way. They were not told to reject or embrace chaos, just do whatever they wanted as long as it actively fucked over the Imperium of Man. The main reason for why, despite this freedom, most chose to reject chaos is because most of the Night Lord leaders served under Conrad or Sevatar, or both, and used them as their role models and inspiration, hence they emulate their anti-chaos sentiment. Ave Domine Nox Brothers in Midnight Clad. Speaking of which, I actually have a Christmas merch drop going live this Friday, or Thursday for Patreons and people on the VIP merch list. This includes a midnight clad t-shirt in midnight blue, as well as the same design on a black singlet, alongside a number of other really cool designs. Stock is very limited and could potentially sell out before the sale goes public, so if you want to guarantee a chance to purchase, then you can sign up to the Patreon for $1, or sign up to the merch website to get notified. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then subscribe. It takes two seconds it's free, and I get a subtle but not unfun tingle in my balls every time it happens. Mm. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Go!